Hi everyone, it's Allison from the Protocase Designer team. Today I'm going to go over how to add countersinks to your design using Protocase Designer. So a countersink is a conical hole cut into metal, and it's most commonly used to allow the head of a screw to sit flush with or below the surface of the material that it's being placed into. There's three primary reasons why designers choose to countersink fasteners into their design. The first is to avoid interference. For example, in a full-size rack mount enclosure, if you were to use pan head screws, the enclosure would very likely rub up against the enclosures that are racked above or below. By using flat head screws that have been countersunk, it creates a flush surface that gives you the clearance you need. Another reason why designers opt to use countersinks is to create a good seal. For instance, if you need a design that's light tight, you can use countersunk flat screws along with the appropriate gaskets to create that tight seal. And finally, a lot of designers choose countersinks for the design because they like the streamlined look that it creates. Here at Protocase, we can countersink any of our stocked metal. Our engineering team recommends choosing a metal that is a minimum of 0.048 inches as a basic starting point. But if your design requires a countersink in a thinner metal, just contact us to discuss your options. Countersinking in Protocase Designer is a straightforward way to customize your design to your needs. Let me show you how. First, I'm going to show you a quick way to countersink the fasteners in the Protocase Designer template that you start with. So when you select a template, you'll notice that under screw type, you can opt to use pan head or flat head screws. By selecting flat head screws, the software will automatically countersink the fasteners that hold together your template. Also, if you're designing a rack mount enclosure and it will be a full height enclosure, make sure to check the full height chassis checkbox at the bottom of the template selector. This way, our engineering and design services team will be made aware when they process your design. One final caution that I mentioned earlier when it comes to countersinking, the sheet metal you use can't be too thin. So if the material is too thin, the countersink created will not be deep enough, which means your screw will bottom out and not be flush with the metal surface. We recommend choosing a sheet metal that is 0.048 inches or thicker. But that is flexible, so if you have any uh, specific needs, you can always come to our engineering and design services team to talk it through. Okay, so I've got my template created with my flat stainless steel screws. If we zoom in, we can see that the screws sit flush with the surface of the enclosure. If I had opted for pan head screws, such as on this red five-sided enclosure, the screws would jut out of the surface of the design. So that's the easy way to ensure all of the fasteners of the enclosure template that you're starting with are countersunk. But what if you need to place additional fasteners on your design and you want them to be countersunk? In this example, I've got a mounting bracket for an SSD that I'll be placing in the inside of my rack mount enclosure, mounted from the outside. I'll need cutouts for four mounting screws. So let's hide the cover first to get a better look. I'll need to place four cutouts for the fasteners in this vicinity of the enclosure, but I need to do it from the outside of the enclosure. So to get started, I need to click on Edit Face and select the outside bottom of the enclosure. Okay, so now we're in the Face Editor. From here, I'm going to select Cut Out under Mode and draw a small circle in the general area where I want screw A of my bracket to go. You can move its placement to be exactly where it needs to be a little later. So the circle cutout that you make doesn't have to be the exact size you need. However, I do recommend making it pretty small, around 0.1 inches in diameter. If you look to the right-hand side of your screen, underneath the object properties like origin XY, diameter, and others, there's a countersink checkbox. Checking this box will make a countersink. Because we've created a circle cutout that doesn't match with the actual size required for the countersink, Protocase Designer is going to prompt me to correct it, which of course I'll want to do. But one thing to note here, you may get a prompt from Protocase Designer that looks like this. The prompt is warning you that the material you've chosen is too thin to countersink. Remember, if you try to countersink material that's too thin, the screw will bottom out, which means that it won't actually sit flush with the material, and it could also cause mounting issues with the components you're trying to screw into. So if you get this warning, you can click Accept, which means that you want the material to be the thickness that you've already chosen, and you still want to make the countersink. Protocase Designer will indicate the metal thickness you'll require to make a countersink. 
If you click Reject, the circle cutout you created will not become a countersink. So from here you can click Save and go back to the 3D model viewer. Then you can click on Edit and Edit Enclosure Properties to change the thickness of your metal. But back to my project, let's finish the countersink that I've started creating. And you can tell it's a countersink because it's indicated by a solid circle with another circle drawn around it. That outside circle indicates the outside diameter of the head of the screw you'll be using, so you just need to make sure to keep it clear from any intercepting cutouts and fasteners, etc. So below the countersink checkbox that you've already checked, you'll notice that there's a drop-down menu. This is where you can select other screw types and the countersink angles required for them, based on your needs. One tip for you, 82 and 90 degree countersinks tend to bottom out before 100 degree countersinks. So if you're using a thinner metal, choosing a 100 degree countersink might be best. So I need M3 screws to mount my bracket, so I'm going to change this in the drop down, but I'll stick with the 90 degree countersink. So that's done, that's the basic way to create a countersink. If you require something even more custom, you can use the custom checkbox below to do some more advanced changes. Here, you can opt to change the top diameter of your countersink, which will then change the cutout body diameter automatically. You may want to do these advanced customizations if you're using specialty screws or require more clearance. So once you've created your first countersink, you can simply copy and paste to create additional countersinks if you want them all to be the same size. So in my particular example, my bracket needs four countersinks, so I need to create those three remaining countersinks. So to start, I need to create an additional countersink that is 3.016 inches from the first countersink I created, which I'll call countersink A. So first, I'll need to align countersink B with countersink A by clicking on the button called Align Centers of Objects Vertically. Now that they're aligned, I'm going to use the measurement tool to properly position countersink B. So under Tools, I need to select Measure and then click the center of countersink A. I'll know the center has been selected when the circle highlight turns green. Then I need to select the center of countersink B. While they're both highlighted, I can then go to the right-hand side of the face editor. Here, I can change the distance to 3.016 inches. Okay, so I've got countersink A, countersink B. Next, I'm going to copy and paste another countersink and place it below countersink B. This one is going to be countersink C. So first, I need to position countersink C by using the Align Centers of Objects Horizontally button. Next, I'll use the Measure tool to place countersink C 2.43 inches from countersink B. Finally, I'll place my fourth countersink by copying and pasting again to create countersink D. Similar to before, I'll use the Align Centers of Objects Vertically button to make sure countersink D is in line with countersink C. Then, I'll use the Measure tool to position countersink D 3.016 inches from countersink C. Now I have my four countersinks created in place where they need to be. So from here, I'm going to click the green check mark to save my changes. Now that we're back in the 3D model viewer, I can see my four countersink cutouts. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. So to sum up, there are a few things that you can keep in mind when creating countersinks in Protocase Designer. You can countersink the primary fasteners that attach your enclosure together by changing the screw type in the enclosure properties to be flathead screws. Secondly, the minimum thickness for sheet metal is usually 0.048 inches, but if you require thinner metal in your design and want to countersink, just contact us to discuss your options. Finally, be sure to keep the outside circle of your countersink away from any intercepting cutouts and fasteners. If you have any questions or want any more information, please feel free to check out the Protocase Designer forum, or you can always email info at protocasedesigner.com. Our wiki is also a great source of information. Thanks for watching and happy designing.